Fun fact, Kiko Ajina, who played Lane Kim on Gilmore Girls, recently did an AMA Reddit, and I learned that Amy Sherman Palladino, who is the creator of Gilmore Girls, one of her closest friends is Helen Pei. Helen Pei is also a co-producer of Gilmore Girls and Bunhead, and Helen Pei's name is an anagram of Hep Alien, which is the band that Lane is in. Pei, the husband's name, is Dave Rogowski. Dave Rogowski. She is married to a man named Dave Rogowski, which means that the character of Lane Kim and the character of Dave Rogowski were probably supposed to be meant to end up together. But Adam Brody just had to go off and film the OC, which I mean, I'm I'm grateful for. But I mean, couldn't he have done both? They were supposed to be together. Not Lane and Zach. Zach's fine. He's but they weren't supposed to be together. I'm really angry that they weren't. Also, the real Dave Rogowski is a musician. And he played all the guitar parts for Hep Alien. Fun facts. Love them. Gotta love them. So every month I have decided to let you know what I'm reading. So this video is either going to go up at the end of the month or at the beginning of a new month. So this video I'm going to talk about what I read in January and February because I didn't read that much. And I'm kind of in a slump and I'm behind for my 60 book challenge reads but it's the beginning of the year. I'm fine. I won't be talking about everything that I read during the month but I will talk about the things that I'm most excited to talk about. So let's Let's do it. So I started off the new year with reading The Cuckoo's Calling and then following up with The Silkworm. And I loved, I loved, loved, loved these. I didn't expect to like these books this much. So as you might know, they're written by this new guy, Robert Galbraith, who might actually be J.K. Rowling. It is J.K. Rowling. And when the news broke that J.K. Rowling actually wrote The Cuckoo's Calling, I wasn't quick enough to get to a bookstore to buy the first edition that does not say her name. So then I just put off buying the book, and then the second book came out, and for my birthday, I got these two beautiful books, and I was very excited. So if for those of you who don't know, The Cuckoo's Calling follows Corman Strike, who is a private investigator. And he's not getting that much business, and life isn't that great for him. Until one day, this man comes into his office and says that he is the brother of Lulu Landry, who is a supermodel who recently died. Police just write it off as a suicide, but her brother's like, no, it was a murder, she was murdered, and I want you to crack the case. It is just such a great mystery novel. I need to read more mystery novels. So Corman also hires an assistant in this book and who is Robin and she was only supposed to work there for two weeks but she's always wanted to kind of be a detective and she's just really likes that world and she may be hired on full time. So The Silkworm is the second book in the Corman Strike series. It is equally fantastic and I loved it. Um, the next book that I'll be talking about is White Teeth by Zadie Smith, which was my first Zadie Smith novel. I was really looking forward to this, but when I started this, I was kind of in a reading slump and I wasn't really enjoying anything that I was reading, and I thought this was going to be the book to pull me out of it, but it took me most of February to read. I was just not that into it. It wasn't the book's fault. It was just me. So the book follows these three families. They all live in London. They're all connected. Um, but they all come from like different cultures and just seeing how they're adapting to ways ways of life and how the kids are growing up, just kind of finding their way. It's just a lot of different perspectives. Each section is um, following a different person, but of course they're all connected because they're either related or they're in a relationship or they're friends. I did enjoy it. The last book I read in February is Like Water for Chocolate, a novel of monthly installments with recipes, romances, and home remedies. And it was written by Laura Esquivel. Not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. I love this book. It was I have never read anything like it because it's part novel, part cookbook. It's divided up into 12 sections. Each section is a new month and each section starts off with a new recipe. This book will make you crave Mexican food which is not a bad thing. So this story kind of follows this family but it focuses on Tita who loves Pedro but she cannot marry Pedro because her family has this long-standing tradition where the youngest child cannot 
get married and has to stay at home and take care of her mother until she dies. So Tita is stuck at home and Tita's only kind of outlet is cooking. And these kind of magical supernatural things happen when she cooks and it is just such a wonderful story. It has a bunch of really great strong and complicated women and I loved it. I loved it so much. And this book definitely got me out of my reading slump. It is super romantic at times. It's very sad. It's just this roller coaster of emotions and it's beautiful and it's beautifully written. I, and I definitely see myself rereading this book in the future. So those are some of the books I read in January and February. So let me know some of the books that you've been reading recently and that you've been enjoying because I'm constantly looking for new things to read. So that's all guys. I hope you have a lovely day and <laughs> bye. Wayne Kim, Dave Rogowski, we're supposed to be together. <laughs> Adam Brody, why? Why? Why couldn't you do both?